Welcome to window number seven in our 2021 St. Mark's online Advent calendar. In addition to any Advent calendars you may have or are using in your homes, it's our desire to present daily devotions behind every window of our virtual Advent calendar, aligned with the study of a particular Christmas carol. Each day we will highlight the carol, investigate its roots, reveal its meanings and significance, and appreciate its place in the world of Christmas music. Every window features a brief meditation, scripture, and prayer. What better way to anticipate the coming of the Christ child than by focusing on important hymns and carols, all inspired by his birth. Today's carol is Carol of the Bells. Today's scripture comes from 1 John, the first chapter, verses three and four. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. For a time, in the 1970s and 1980s, one waited every year for the return of a commercial, touting the tastiness and luxury of Andre Pink Champagne. The reason I mention this is that the background music featured throughout that commercial was the very popular and famous Carol of the Bells. The tune became so well associated with the champagne that people often referred to, you know, the song in that champagne commercial. As associated with the holidays as this tune has become, it is interesting to note that the original appearance and use of this melody had absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with Christmas. According to Anthony Potowniak, a Rice University graduate studying the song's history, the song, with its haunting four-note melody, was originally a Ukrainian folk song written as a winter well-wishing song. It was written in 1916 by Mykola Leonovich, an Ukrainian composer, and in and entitled Shedrick. The song tells the tale of a swallow who flies into a household in order to proclaim the bountiful year the family will have. The swallow is a messenger that spring is coming. The original lyrics featured the swallow singling out the master of the house and telling him of all the wealth he will possess, money, livestock, and a beautiful wife. Eventually, a choir director named Oksandr Koshitz commissioned Leonovich to write a song based on Ukrainian folk melodies for an upcoming Christmas concert. Using those familiar four notes and the lyrics of that good luck song, Leonovich created Shedrick, a work for a choir. Few know that the composition Shedrick was composed and performed during a time of intense social upheaval and political political struggle in Ukraine. The same choir director who assigned the writing of the song to Leonovich formed the Ukrainian National Chorus to promote Ukrainian music in major cultural centers of the West. The group toured across Europe as well as North and South America. The folk tune that Leonovich used to compose the work was one of many well-wishing tunes sung in Ukrainian villages on January 13th, which was the New Year's Eve on the Julian calendar. It would have been sung by young girls going from house to house in celebration of the New Year. The girls would be rewarded with baked goods or some other delicious treat. The song was first introduced to the USA to a sold out audience in Carnegie Hall on October 5th, 1921. Upon hearing the work, American choir director and arranger Peter Wilkowski was reminded of bells, so he wrote new lyrics to convey that imagery for his choir. Although from the town of Passaic, New Jersey, Wilkowski's parents came from what was now known as the Czech Republic. His new version was copyrighted in 1936, even though the original had been published two decades earlier by the late 1930s, several of Wachowski's choirs began performing his arrangement with English lyrics during the Christmas holiday season. 
newly minted as Carol of the Bells, the song has become associated with Christmas because of the new lyrics, which reference caroling, silver bells, and Christmas. In the 1940s, recordings of the piece by such famous groups as Fred Waring and his Pennsylvanians and the Roger Wagner Chorale surf surfaced. It should also be noted that, as a child, Wilhowski was gifted with a beautiful singing voice that got him into the renowned Russian Cathedral Boys Choir in New York City. He was part of the group when they gave a command performance before President Woodrow Wilson at the White House. A graduate of the Juilliard School of Music, Wilhowski is probably best remembered today for creating the Mormon Tabernacle Choir's stirring arrangement of the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Before long, the piece became a popular staple in the choral Christmas canon. As a Christmas composition, Shedrick never caught on in Ukraine, where songs like it still are reserved for the Julian New Year. Bells, however, have always figured largely in music of the Christmas season. In medieval times, the bells tolled for an hour before midnight on Christmas Eve. The tolling was to warn the powers of darkness of the approaching birth of the Savior. As a result, bells have become a vital part of our Christmas decorations and Christmas card designs. By today's standards, it is difficult to envision a Christmas without bells, as bells are the symbol of joyful chimes announcing important news, such as weddings, the end of wars, and the beginning of new lives. It only seems natural that Christmas is the season when bells are most evident. Think about, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, or jingle bells or silver bells, some sacred, some secular, but all so closely related to Christmas. Even though, oddly enough, there is only one mention of bells in the entire Bible, there is a story handed down by early Christians that some accept as true. Supposedly, on that first Christmas, every bell on earth magically chimed at the same time to welcome God's Son. Never before had the earth heard such a majestic and melodious refrain. It seemed that the bells rang in perfect harmony, proclaiming a joyous song of hope and wonder. What a fitting greeting for the King of Kings, perhaps inspired by this Slavic legend that all the bells in the world rang on the night that Jesus was born. Wachowski's lyrics are all about the bells spreading the good news over hill and dale and on without end. Let's pray. Creator of us all, we stop in amazement to thank you for the gift of Christmas and the gift of music. We thank you for the ringing and clanging of bells that, even today, command your attention when they ring from our church steeples and sound out your praise. We remark at your hand in bringing seemingly unrelated materials together to bring you glory. Whoever would have thought that a Ukrainian folk song about prosperity could be converted into a fantastic song about bells that is both jubilant and instantly recognizable. Help us to live out our days as cel celebratory bells, sounding your praise. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Hark how the bells, sweet silver bells, all seem to say, throw cares away. Christmas is here, bringing good cheer to young and old. Seems to hear words of good cheer from everywhere, filling the air. Oh, holy palm, praising the sound, oh, hell a day, all their tones. Gaily they ring while people sing songs of good cheer. Christmas is here. Day, merry, 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 day, Christmas. Day, merry, merry, day, Christmas. Day, on only sing, dawn without end. Day, joyful tone, to every home. Quick on the bells, sweet silver bells, all seem to say, throw cares away. Christmas is here, bringing good cheer to young and old. Seems to hear words of good cheer from everywhere, well in the air. Oh, holy palm, praising the sound, oh, hell a day, all their tones. Gaily they ring while people sing songs of good cheer. Christmas is here, merry, 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 merry Christmas. Merry, 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 merry Christmas.